What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we're gonna check out 10 times WWE fire talent for crazy reasons. Now, this should be a very interesting one. We all know Vince McMahon will fire you for some of the wildest reasons, Some something so small. Uh, if you guys remember, Titus O'Neil um had a situation i think all the superstars were on the stage i think stephanie mcmahon was trying to walk through and titus pulled vince to the side to let stephanie walk through first and vince was upset like the reports are the rumors are that vince wanted to fire him on the spot because titus had touched him to move out the way like he didn't like that it's crazy your career could have been over because of just that so we're going to check out some of these moments where, you know, boys got featured Endeavor probably for some wild reasons. Oh, shit. Couldn't even get that out. Let's get right into it, man. One, two, is this on? Not every firing in wrestling is just, and some have come about in strange ways. Over the years, there's been numerous talent that have been unceremoniously let go. For this video, we'll provide some background as we highlight those who were unfairly dismissed, as well as those who departed in wild circumstances. Today, we list 10 wrestlers who were fired for crazy reasons. When it comes to wrestlers who were fired whilst injured, Steve Austin in WCW is perhaps the most famous example, but the case of Chuck Palumbo is probably the most cruel. Palumbo got his big singles break in 2007, when he was repackaged packaged as a biker, a character that better reflected his real life self. Chuck later had to get shoulder surgery in 2008 that sidelined him for a month. Shortly after beginning rehab for his injury, Palumbo was asked by one of WWE's doctors to come back on the road and cut promos. Looking back now, Palumbo believes that the fact that it was the doctor calling him instead of one of the higher ups should have yeah. raised concerns, as things were about to get worse. Chuck agreed to come back, but this meant he had to be let out of rehab early. Once this happened, oh. Palumbo got a call from the head of talent relations, Johnny Ace, and you can probably guess what happened next yep. he, hands, he, he goes hey uh, chuck hey this is johnny ace and he's giggling he's laughing laughing a little bit god uh, we're gonna have to release you i said you're good man i said you're slick you're good i laughed i had to laugh like what, what else can i do he got me chuck got absolutely played here the wwe tricked him to be let out of rehab because uh... legally they weren't allowed to release someone that was under a doctor's care but yeah. now since palumbo had left rehab they were able to fire him screw you yep that sound about right that's that that sounds about sounds about right bro that's fucked up bro you're fired Palumbo's former manager, Rico, was another wrestler who didn't end on great terms with WWE. Despite starting his career late, Rico fit right in WWE. He was fun to watch as he went all in on his flamboyant character. Rico was never able to truly win over the boss, however. Rico was even once disrespected backstage by Vince McMahon's son, Shane. And Shane walks right up to me and goes, you know, Rico, you're going to be nothing but a flatbacker which wow. is a job. Despite clearly putting in the work, Rico's salary did not reflect his contributions to the company. He asked for a raise that would have seen him make $1,000 a week, which even at that was small change compared yeah. to what other talent on a similar level were making. Well, I got released because I asked for a raise. I asked for a thousand bucks a week. Over the next few years, despite his departure, Rico was asked to return twice. On both occasions, he was offered less money than he was making previously. Damn. So it was no surprise that he promptly turned the company down. I got asked to come back twice told him no the first time and F no the second time. He, he pays you, then he fires you, then he brings you back for less money. Before yeah. his release, Rico was paired on screen That's with Charlie cold. Haas and Jackie Gaida. Haas and Gaida were a real life couple that got married in 2005. After just completing their honeymoon together, Haas got a call from Johnny Ace to say that both he and Jackie had been fired, as Haas revealed on Rene Dupree's Café de Rene podcast. Say, so I gotta let you both go. Hey, Johnny, we just got married. We just got back from our honeymoon. For better or for worse, right guys? Oh, oh, oh. How do you find uh, you know, laughter in that. Rene Dupree later spoke about how they may have. Yeah, nah, they they were some assholes, bro. And you know what? They're getting what they deserve right now. Even if it ain't true, the allegations they they they're in the heat right now. They they were some assholes. They were some assholes, bro. Like that's fucked up. You just laughing like ha ha ha. For better or for worse, like bro, that's fucked up, bro been more to Hoss and Jackie's firing, as Renee mentioned that Vince McMahon had previously made a pass at Jackie, <gasps> wow. in which she refused his advances. This is unsurprising, given everything that would come out about Vince yeah. years later. Vince also made a pass at Jackie, which she declined, and you see what happened once her and Charlie got married. Yep. If you don't put Vince over, 
he gets mad at you and takes it out on your career. Yep. Firing someone That's after just right. getting married is bad enough, but imagine being fired whilst pregnant. This is what happened to Dawn Marie in 2005. Dawn Marie was signed to WWE after working for ECW. She starred on the SmackDown brand for three years. After telling the office she was pregnant, Dawn was taken off the road. The company also tried to keep her from appearing at ECW One Night Stand, but Dawn fought them on this and was ultimately able to appear. Less than a month later, Johnny Ace made the call to tell Dawn Marie she was being let go. By this point, she was on maternity leave. In 2006, Dawn filed a wrongful termination suit against WWE, which reached a settlement in 2007. I'm sorry, we're gonna have to let you go because we just, creators just don't have anything right now. And I go, whoa, just be honest. You could have sent me home, have my baby, and then come back. All those big, huge talk shows, they wanted to talk to me. I just kept telling them, no, 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 no. I'm gonna solve my business, my business because I don't believe in exposing a business. Dawn Marie mm. didn't appear on WWE programming again until she was seen in attendance for former ECW boss Paul Heyman's Hall of Fame speech in 2024. Joey Styles also worked for ECW. Yeah, bro, this is, it just, this is crazy, bro. This is actually kind of messed up because <clears throat> when you really think about it, like when you really break this down, people work their whole entire life to, you know, get into WWE, show their craft, and then for someone to, for one, for you to probably not be high on the card and they give you some shit ass gimmick that you got to try to make the best of. Two, for you to not get paid like the like you feel like you're worth because they're giving you a shit ass gimmick. Three, after all of that, dealing with the BS, dealing with the, the trolling from Vince and higher up and all this other stuff, dealing with Vince's son, probably telling you, you ain't going to be nothing but a jobber to then fire you on a, a particular day that's special to you or whatever the case or laughing while they're about to fire you some fucked up shit if you really think about it like it's it's fucked up bro like there's no way around that it's messed up you before joining wwe stars was far from your typical wwe style commentator and had to alter his announcing to fit in after nearly mm -hmm. three years stars called it quits on commentary and began working in the company's digital media department and i don't want this job anymore infamous promo I quit! We would still see Joey pop up on various pieces of programming, including a Facebook Q&A in 2016. Styles spoke candidly about the WWE product and offered insight into what goes on behind the scenes. He jokingly began the video by saying how this interview might get him in trouble. And if there's any heat to be had for the record, it's mine, it's not Kathy. <laughs> this certainly foreshadowed what was to come, in fact. Styles said he was going to be fired because of this interview multiple times throughout it. Well, uh, this might be the answer that gets me fired. Joey has always been a straight up honest guy mm -hmm. and his Q&A was no different. As Styles shared his thoughts on WWE banning the term belt. I understand why we say title because a belt is something that holds up your pants but if it is used as uh, a weapon in the ring a title is not a physical object so I have no problem saying championship belt. Styles also buried his run in WWE as an announcer. My short time on uh, Raw which uh, I'm still in therapy to try to forget and the two years <laughs> I spent on WWE, ECW women were just uh uh, eye candy. He called out wrestlers up and down the card for using the same moves. Please stop doing the suicide dive. Years ago, it was special because very few people did it. Last night, Sasha Banks almost landed on her head. Oh, it's about to get some company. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. God. If it's not special, don't do it anymore. But fans believe the real kicker was his comments regarding Roman Reigns, who WWE were doing everything in their power to push as the top babyface, despite many fans rejecting him. The internet fans are <laughs> begging for WWE to make Roman Reigns a villain or a heel for you smart fans, and it's not happening. So obviously, no, our chairman and WWE does not cater uh, too hard to our hardcore internet fans. You can't. And he was right. He was spot on. It wasn't until they turned him heel that now they have they have the star that they always wanted. Well, at least in Vince's eyes. He was right. He wasn't he wasn't he wasn't wrong about the suicide dive. Like when wrestlers start doing the same stuff, like the same popular or trendy moves, it loses its effectiveness. It needs to be something that be pulled out every now and then. So when you see it, it's like, oh man, that that was cool to see. You don't see it as much. So he has some fair criticisms.
Can't deny Styles wasn't telling the truth in everything he said. It was great to see the once loose cannon on commentary saying how it is. It was just unfortunate that it ended up costing him his job. This is so much fun and of course people remember. Well, they're gonna remember it because it's gonna be what finally got me fired. A short time after the Q&A was posted, Styles was released. A few people have told me they thought that you tried to get fired. Is that true or false? Um, no, I was not, I was not trying to get <laughs> While the video was scrubbed from WWE socials, the WWE have rarely ever done candid interviews in this format before or since, and it's no surprise why. Styles later embarked on a brief stint in independent wrestling until he was once again fired from his position, this time as the announcer for Evolve. This was after Joey used the Donald Trump line to compliment the ring announcer. Political talk had been strictly forbidden mm. by Evolve founder Gabe Sapolsky, but Styles went for it anyway. After being dismissed for his comments here, Joey has never worked in wrestling again, and has completely disappeared from the public eye. Joey Styles famously replaced Jim Ross on commentary in 2005 as the WWE looked to phase JR out, only to bring him back in a few months later. Mm -hmm. This is nothing new as the company has tried multiple times to get rid of Ross, only to realize no one can fill his shoes. Actually, Facts. Jim Ross came back to Raw. I was replaced on well, What does that tell you? They hate him. I thought that was my chair. Yeah. And I really appreciate him keeping it warm for me. By 2013, Jim wasn't commentating anymore, but he was still mm -hmm. under contract. He did various bits and pieces, including hosting an all-star panel for the upcoming WWE 2K14 video game during SummerSlam weekend. JR was given a format and script to follow, but it wasn't long until it all went out the window. Jim was in good spirits as he cracked jokes. We had a really cool panel. Most are actually sober, <laughs> but not all. Can you imagine what the internet and the dirt sheets are gonna say about this shit? Yeah, <laughs> I love it. The panel centered around the new game and the 30 years of WrestleMania theme. Although anytime Ric Flair was asked the question, he would go off topic. John Cena, in a five hour road trip, he'll drink 30 beers. I don't get it. He's a, he has a genetic gift. The only guy that drank more booze than me after WCW was Gene Oakland. And Gene, Gene's had three kidney transplants. <laughs> we stole it at SummerSlam for WWE and we stole it for that company, whatever it's called, TNA. You get me? Uh, Ric Flair, be, he be on one. He, he just say, Whatever he he just be saying whatever comes to his mind, bro. That won't make the edit. <laughs> no, no, hey, hey, no, no, I don't care. Stephanie McMahon and the WWE higher ups were livid with how the panel went. They didn't like how Jr. and Flair behaved. Rick was pulled from appearing at SummerSlam the next day, while for Jim he would be released a few weeks later. Vince McMahon believed Jr. went on stage drunk during a meeting between he and Vince. Ross denied this and said that he was fatigued, which caused his Bell's palsy to act up. I wasn't drunk. Uh, I had a cocktail, but so did everybody else. You know, Rick, unfortunately, had been drinking most of the afternoon. That's I know right. you're going to fire me, so could you get it over with so I can make my flight back home, I said. <laughs> what a wise ass. I just didn't do a very good job of being reliable on that day, and the more I talked, the more I buried myself. Despite this, JR still put over the video game well, and 2K were happy with how the panel went. Plus, it was very entertaining for the fans watching along. Something fans didn't find That's entertaining, crazy, on the other hand, bro. was world champion. And, and here's the thing: they've they've always treated JR with not the best respect you would think for someone that was literally the voice of your wrestling company in its peak days. He was the voice of wrestling as a whole for a lot of people. So they didn't really treat him with respect. They didn't. It's been many of times, many accounts of them disrespecting this guy who's done so much for their business. Put that into perspective. Championship Wrestling under Vince Russo's creative. In an attempt to try and recapture the magic he had with the WWF, Russo made wholesale changes to WCW. He did this by overhauling the roster, which included getting rid of most of the international talent that had helped differentiate Jeez. WCW from the competition. Much to the chagrin of Sonny Ono, who was one of the people that got released. So when Vince Russo came in, saying that he was from America, that he didn't want any Japanese or Mexican on his American TV, proceeded to terminate every Japanese town, all the wow. Mexicans off TV. Russo's comments and subsequent actions led to a discrimination suit filed against WCW by Ono. This was just one of the numerous discrimination lawsuits the company faced during this time period. Ono's lawsuit was settled for a sum believed to be in the seven-figure range. Russo Ooh. had continued to say that he believes Japanese or Mexican wrestlers could never get over with US audiences. Vince also said he doesn't give a crap about seeing Japanese or Mexican wrestlers on TV and only wants to see Americans. Uh, most of them can't speak English. It is a hindrance to them and it, it's very difficult for them to relate with American fans and vice versa.
so what did you that, mean by that, I don't that, give that, a that, shit that, about a Mexican guy? What does that mean then? If I'm watching Raw this week, I'm not interested in Kalisto. That makes me a racist because I got no interest in Kalisto. Speaking of it's how you book them, bro. As simple as that. People are, have always been interested in Rey Mysterio. It's how you book them. We got to stop that. It's how you book people. Simple. People were interested in Asuka before they messed up her booking. It's how you booked them. Stop that. That's dumb. I don't know if he thinks that I like that now, but that's just a dumb statement. Of Americans, our next example's name was a combination of two of the United States' most famous presidents, and the reason he was fired actually relates to real life politics. We're talking about Abraham Washington, whose brief run in WWE is most remembered for his controversial departure. Whilst manager of I the primetime players this. in 2012, Washington talked him. trash on the outside during a match. Yeah, he was mic'd so. up so the live crowd and television audience could hear him. Abraham would make a joke that landed yeah. him in hot water uh, as he referenced uh, the Kobe Bryant case from 2003. Where's the announcers Kobe? had to apologize for the joke after the commercial. We would like to apologize, ladies and gentlemen, for the remarks made by AW moments ago. Nevertheless, AW was fined $5,000 for the remark, but continued to make appearances on WWE TV. 11 days after the incident, Washington was released from his WWE uh -huh. contract, but not because of the Kobe Bryant joke. AW thinks he was actually fired because of a tweet he sent out supporting Linda McMahon's run for US Senate in Connecticut. During this campaign, Linda chose to distance herself from the WWE, meaning no one from the company was allowed to mention her in public. Uh -huh. Fans would have understood this firing more if Washington got axed for the Kobe comment, but being let go because of showing support for Linda just rubbed people the wrong way. Perhaps it was a combination of the two, but either way, it was certainly a crazy way to exit the company. I don't yeah. know what I was thinking that night, but maybe I saw a political commercial or something, and I just sent it out there. You know, the next day I hear, I get the call, so it's like, uh-oh. Uh -oh, yeah. I didn't think it was that bad, but okay. yeah, it was. Another wrestler best known for how they departed WWE was Robbie Jeez. McAllister, who wrestled as part of the Highlanders on Raw. In 2008, during WrestleMania week, Robbie was in Florida for the show, but had absolutely nothing to do, since he was so far down on WWE's totem pole. This coupled with the fact that he was unhappy with his place in the company made him decide to attend a TNA show in Orlando, the same city WrestleMania was being held. Robbie was shown on camera and faced the brunt of a Johnny Ace phone call oh. after leaving the building. Many stars from the sports, from the entertainment world on hand here tonight at Thursday Night Impact. I just did something I shouldn't have done, and, you know, I knew it was stupid, but, you know, fuck it. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> and he basically... He basically says, what's one of my fucking talent doing on fucking TV, blah, blah, blah. Robbie wasn't actually fired straight away, but was kept around to do jobs on TV. But this is where he's... And this is what they do. They're not going to fire you immediately sometimes. They'll put you in that super jobber position to put over talent to make you look weak as possible. So then when they do let you go, then it comes off as, oh, this was the guy that was in WWE and now he's in another company. We're supposed to take him seriously. They try to kill your stock as much as possible before you leave. Tag partner Rory comes into the occasion. Rory was injured at the time of the incident, so the WWE waited a few months until he was healthy and then proceeded to fire both Highlanders. Wow. Sticking with the Scottish theme for our final entry, Rowdy Roddy Piper. Nice Piper sensationally returned to the WWE at WrestleMania That's 19. Up, he went on to have a short run with the company. That came to an abrupt end after Hot Rod appeared in a HBO piece that highlighted wrestlers whose lives ended prematurely. Piper spoke candidly about his injuries and substance abuse in wrestling. My right hip has been titanium since December 94. He reflected on the struggles of life after wrestling. The interview was just as sad as it was Recipe. honest. I hate oh, him. I don't watch myself on TV. Uh, I hate that guy. Because I know what that guy's thinking. I know what that guy's capable of doing. I know what he's thought of. And there's nothing nice about that guy at all. That guy being you. That guy yeah. being Roddy Piper. As fans, we see these larger than life personalities, not realizing the biggest battles don't happen in the ring. They uh -huh. occur when the red light goes off. This interview is most famous because of how Roddy eerily predicted his eventual demise. Yeah. What what would you have me do at 49? When I, my pension plan, I can't take out till I'm 65. 
I'm not gonna make 65. Vince McMahon appeared in the piece as well, in which he famously lashed out at the interviewer. Despite how Vince behaved here, it was Piper that got in trouble, as McMahon fired Roddy after the interview aired. And how much of this falls on Vince McMahon's shoulders? The Piper answer says, right now, all of it. I never said that. And they never showed that on TV. Like, Roddy's point of view has been one of an anti-promoter point of view all his life. A lot of times you lash out, you know, and that's what Roddy was doing, was lashing out. When someone says, you know, really rotten things about your company, you're not going to welcome them with open arms, you know? You're going to say, time for us to uh, say goodbye. WWE put out a statement which went as follows. To assist Piper from engaging in any self-destructive behavior, the WWE is ending any further discussion with Piper regarding a contract. The WWE Ew. sincerely hopes for Piper and his family that Roddy can find happiness. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to watch our similar video. This was a tough one, man, because you, you just hate to see the type of stuff that boys had to go through and deal with in relation to WWE and how they treated them when they didn't feel like they needed them anymore or they feel like they did something wrong and how they were fire people it's it's really crazy and and I said just WWE that does this it's a lot of corporations they only look at you as a number and how much you can value them once you're not a value to them they will let you go with the quickness man Comment down below. Let me know, man. I don't even know what to say. I don't. I don't even know what I want y'all to comment down. To be honest with you, because this is one of those type of videos. This is like it's kind of messed up, bro. <laughs> I don't even. I don't even know what to say. This is it's messed up, bro. I will say this before I end this video. Bet on yourself. Bet on yourself. Bet on your worth. Bet on you accomplishing what you need to accomplish and not waiting for someone else to give that to you bet on yourself because you will be surprised what people will do once they see the worth that you've already saw you've already been seeing your worth but now everyone else see it so i'll put that out there bet on yourselves i appreciate all love support road to 150k still gonna be the youtube wrestling champion where i appreciate y'all keeping me see you on the next one peace